check it. It's been six months. Why seven months since I quit my job? That's it. Read my blog at wagonwatch.com. Talk about the economy. It's imploding. Another channel, you just need the game on your main channel. Unhinged. Do a video about being a boomer, a gamer, and the zoomer guy in the United States. Do you think I'm a boomer? I was born in 2007. Mm -mm. I'm 19. Everyone is confused. I'm obviously not. No filter, I guess. I can put a filter. You want to put a filter on my mic? Mm -hmm. Howdy. Uh, I am 30, by the way. Miles is 17 confirmed. Well, I'm fresh out of the womb, guys. But anyway, fresh enough up. about my womb. <laughs> enough about me being fresh. I'm here to say that you too can follow your dreams. I've obviously learned something. I quit my job and I thought this will all be easy. This will actually all be so easy that. Anyone could probably do it. I quit my job. And so I've created a step-by-step -step guide 
for everyone out there who's wondering, can I quit my job? Can I a year ago. All my dreams? Can I be a content creator? And let me just say, am I talking to you? Yeah, that's right, Abigail Snyder, I'm talking to you. And that's right, Mark Johnson, I like turtles, I'm talking to you. Hold core alarm. I'm not going to so sexually so harass me at work. I get that enough every day. I adore it. I, uh, if you're not into Hope Stop course, violence against you women. Quit your 9 to 5 if you join my special force. Mm? No. I'm here to tell you. <laughs> you can all pay for my educated course, or which I personally tell you about how awesome I am. I did watch Jake Paul's uh, course for a video at one point about being rich, and I found it to be awesome. Mm. Um, <laughs> Miles, you're an influencer. Be careful. Everyone, I'm, I'm going to specifically, I want to go to, when I say schools now, I want to say everyone should drop off in there. Mm. We need more influencers and less influencers. And I've said it before. I'm obviously joking. We need people that help other people. That's a really important part of culture. But I think that I, I, so I've learned a little bit. Nurses are underpaid and overworked. And also, I should say before I even get this started, I'm just like, a, <laughs> that I'm, <laughs> I'm just like you guys. I'm actually just like you guys. And I want to be for real like that. And I can stir my, I can stir my community, my half that community up in there. And every single one of you, I take a bullet for and or give my kidney for. Mm -mm. And Don't I'm do that. You have a whole baby. And if you're somebody that's like, holy shit, I kind of want to follow my dreams. Well, I'm going to step by step guide for you that's going to kind of clear some stuff up. Because there's some things I learned that are probably bullshit. And I think everyone should glean a little something from it. And everyone should sort of lean in on and say, hey, by the way, thanks for being a regular guy, Miles. Please don't pay while your content or I'll die. Mm. Uh, yeah. Well, here's what I'll say about it. Well, I don't. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Here's what I'll say about my own. Oh! <laughs> he got hit in the face with a board. <laughs> <laughs> Miles. Oh, my oh God. God. I've been hit. Smacked in the whole that face. Thought it would be held up with painter's hey, tape. Violence, yeah, One of the weakest of tapes. It. Yeah, okay, so Nandini Burma. It's three I'm feet by two holding feet. Tape, I want to be totally clear about this. This is kind of my fault. Because I thought. <laughs> so one of these sides was like resting like this on something, it was resting like this, and then the other side, it was like resting on a little ledge. And then the blue painter's tape. Around mm. the corner, okay? Around the corner it was stuck, I said. It was around the corner and it was stuck. And then, probably what happened, which is something that I probably figured should happen, is that the paper tape came undone, 
and the thing fell right onto my goddamn face. <laughs> so. Miles needs to do another weed and coffee episode <laughs> with Will Litwer. Um, that was that gold. Happened, and I just want everyone to say, you know what? I'd do it again. Mm-hmm. Um, anyway, so, now that I've hit myself in the face, I'm sorry that happened to you, I feel partially responsible. Grace Aldean, mm. it's your whole fault. Um, anyway, so, don't blame saying, Grace. I can't believe the timing of that, by the way. <laughs> it says, here's what I'll say about paywall content, and literally, the whiteboard. <laughs> fell out of the sky and punched me in the face. What was I saying? That was unfucking real Rebecca Jones. What was I saying? I'm a big believer. I'm going to just talk about my own content because I am sort of in slippery waters here and I don't want to, I'm not trying to get involved mm-hmm. in fucking anything. Hey Mackenzie, thank you for saying. Uh, with my own content, I have found it to be, and this is funny because it's one of the things I wanted to talk about mine with my journey to doing the thing, uh, which is starting my own business and having it like exist outside of a job that I do, you know. So I left my job in August and I uh, run my own business now. I'm a business owner, baby. And so one of the things with that, I was like, okay, I got this podcast. Also, it's kind of weird because I went on a sort of reverse thing where a lot of people have, like, not a lot of people. Some people mm-hmm. have successful YouTube channels and successful audiences and then they take those audiences into a podcast that is less successful but maybe more profitable than their YouTube videos. Um, mm. Like let's say you have somebody who has a million uh, listeners or whatever. Uh, or a, a million like YouTube viewers uh, or subscribers. Then they pivot into a podcast that is like less successful than that or whatever. So I came from the very weird place of I had a podcast that was allowing me that was like successful enough that it was starting to become its own business. Okay, and now king. I start my own business so that I can get it into like a successful YouTube business thing, which is kind of weird. Uh, so I forget to talk about the Spotify event. Okay, mm. I did go to a Spotify event and it was funny. And I was there and there was all sorts of cool celebrities. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, they're YouTube celebrities. And I was kind of like, okay, is Second Cry in the chat? Literally, what is up, Kaylin? Mm-hmm. Kaylin? <laughs> Okay, so a big part of my business is Patreon, and I always have operated under the uh, under the assumption, under the idea that like a good way to have a business is to release. Oh, it's Maddie. Maddie, what's up? Maddie. How's it going? Fucking long time no chat, Maddie. It's been a million years. Uh, I hope you're well. I uh, but a big part of my business. There you go. was the idea that it was like, okay, I have a product that goes out. Andrew, thanks for the super chat. Thanks for the you. You just attacked Will because I'm so racist. <laughs> I have to regret like a college idiot these days. A big part of my business is like release something for free, and then people who really like it, who want to support me even further, or people who listen to the show every week who want like an extra episode, give that uh, on a Patreon, or if you want it ad free or whatever. And I found that that model has been so successful for me because I, I don't know, and I try to make the Patreon show uh, good, and I'm very proud of the work that's gone on there, like the show that I make. But so much of it is that, okay, you're already consuming something every week. Then you might be like, oh, man, I just finished this episode. I want another one. Mm-hmm. And, like, that is such a good method to do things. You're already consuming something that you like. Here's another little piece of that. You know what I mean? So, like, that is so important to my whole business. And I feel like the first part of that has been so time blocking. Mm. So, anyway, not to make this an ad for my own business. So, I left my job. Another thing, well, actually, you know what? I'm going to get into the PowerPoint. Okay, mm-hmm. here we go. 
I love impromptu PowerPoints on social media when they have like PowerPoint parties. So stupid. So funny. Messed up. Messed up his own PowerPoint. I watched, so I saw Accident Man 2 probably like four to six months ago, and then I watched Accident Man today, and it was really funny. Scott Atkins, and Atkins Band-Aid. Bandages had his name on it, and he killed somebody with a band aid. Okay, a bandage. One of them. Um, okay. Band aid is the brand. I think so. How did you spell his own name wrong? Paper Asher? I can't do that. I can't do it. Uh, okay, now it should be fixed. So no, I think it's uh, it was probably the one I'm talking about. Mm. Um, but it's okay. I misspelled my own name. Well, <laughs> don't win. How did Peter Dreams by Miles Bosley on it? Now, step one, let's say you've got dreams, okay? Let's say you've got dreams and you're out here and you're just having dreams. Well, guess what? <laughs> you're going to need to be, be curious your, you're going to need to buy curious your. Mm -mm. Why is Curious George playing I with the Ouija like, board and making Why a pentagram. Because if I go full screen mode, don't even start with me. If I go full screen mode, Kiri Shorge. then I can't see the jack. A and pentagram a and a Ouija board. Which, absolutely not. This is going good. Okay, so step two. Somebody that, like, let's say you like fucking paintings, and that's the thing you like to do. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. Okay? Not me. That's really good. You're going to need to be curious about You're going to need to buy curious about paintings. Okay? Mm -hmm. You're going to need to be curious about all types of stuff. Sometimes I'll talk to people and they'll be like, wait, what's that? Like, I don't want to watch it. If you're, like, into film, for example, you should be really into film. There's a whole thing on TikTok where people were like, oh, like, your favorite movie? Like, just say Toy Story. Like, making fun of celebrities for liking more obscure movies, which is like so crazy. Because to me, yeah, you should be, if you're an expert in something, you should be studying lots of different types of that thing. Mm -hmm. Because it's going to allow you in a diverse like, format by a diverse group of people, a wide but in general, you variety. Should be all kinds of stuff. Like, for content specifically. I am somebody that like probably, and also my backstory is that like I finished Fruits Basket had a w -two job all three seasons. Great. Did what I did I've well, moved on to One Punch Man. <laughs> did I make a mistake? I'm job? on episode Let me two. Tell you. I'm surprised there are only two seasons, I had a though. Job and then it became 
because I know a lot of people who like it a lot. Ask questions and learn a little bit more than you need to. Everyone is so Next upset. Time. Not everyone. Yum, yuck, yum. Um, Watcher fans. Yum, yuck, out there? Majority of them oh, are so upset that, that Watcher what is you? moving its stuff behind a paywall. And I'm like, they if just said yum, in this video that they spend hundreds of thousands good. of dollars for one Don't season of like, one I'm show. And you guys are mad that you have to pay sixty dollars like, for the year. Be like, I want to celebrate my own That's their business. Like, they've got like twenty five people working for them, and they don't want to fire their employees. One of which is Ryan Bernard's own cousin to downsize and make less quality shit. That's not what they want to do. So if you don't want to support them, don't support them, but that's it. And if you can support them, support them. A turtle eating a strawberry is so cute to me. I'm happy for them. I already know about, I guess I'm already familiar with Corridor Crew's model, and I remember when they didn't have that, when they had their app, and then when they decided to make their content through their website, through a paywall. I was like, yeah, because if you don't get enough sponsors paying to fund 25 plus people, you can't, you have to shut down. Yeah, like, people that are weird are fucking weird, regardless of what the hyperfixation is. So don't single out one hyperfixation that gets back way fucking weirder. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's just going to be a regular thing. Maya, I love that comment because it's almost like, it's said with the cadence stuff like, you guys are all at work, and one guy stood up at lunch and started talking, and you're like, <laughs> Next 
Play poker. But I don't know. Mm-mm. I didn't have that one was not buttoned up. That one was not uh never ending for that. I hate looking at Justin Timberlake's face. Let me work on it. Mostly because I don't like or respect him as a person. I just don't want to see him. So there's this whole thing about in content creation, basically, people are chasing the algorithm. There's this very famous speech, and I was at this Patreon event, and the guy Jack Conti, uh, the, uh, the CEO of Patreon, is really awesome. Um, he was talking about the age of content, and basically he was creating a famous speech about um, a quote about a thousand true fans. It's like, if you want to be an artist, you don't need a million people to know who you are. You need a thousand true fans. Mm-hmm. And that is really important to me, because his premise is, you have a thousand true fans that are willing to uh, pay ten dollars a year on various stuff, whether that's uh, merchandise or a live show or a, you know, this, that, or the other thing. If you have a thousand true fans, they're willing to pay ten dollars a month, that's a uh, hundred thousand dollars, and there you go, you can make your living. Um, and uh, I think this quote is from a while ago, though, so like, uh, I'm not sure. Anyway, but the point is basically being like, and Jack Nelson's awesome, like, he's, he's really great, he's found a Patreon, and his point is like, don't seek out uh, millions and millions of views, uh, like in my case, I always look at this on TikTok, don't seek out a million, like 42 million views as a thing that's going to make you successful. I know people TikTok are might get banned tomorrow and night. Not able to make it because you don't need and I'm like mentally preparing myself for one, not having TikTok, but then also getting rid of Instagram. And, like, like, you have a thousand people <laughs> Because I'm like, I don't want to spend my time there either. There's too many ads. And I don't know what is going on with the algorithms, but it's weird. And it's very slow. Very slow. And I'll have to update my website soon. Maybe today. I'll definitely be on YouTube, Twitch, and stream there in a while. We'll do Twitch, and then I got on Fanbase app. Um, okay. It was like so, TikTok the hits the fan. Um, no. No. Okay. Step four. Leaks. Mm-hmm. You gotta fucking leak. Leak. I'm telling you. Step four is leak. Now, if you don't recognize this screenshot, this is a screenshot from uh, like two years into me working at the Try Guys. Mm-hmm. This is where my career is founded. I want everybody to know. I fully understand. I didn't even notice that and I'm the fourth Try Guy who I shall not be named is in the frame guy. because it's just covered up by a big a bubble that says <laughs> Leech. I will love it. And then I was pitched on the podcast after I was out for hernia surgery. And I was like, I gotta come and tell this big guy something big. And they were like, by the way, the leech is referring to me. I still like mm. The leech is referring to me, and the cloud is just covering up somebody who no longer works for them. Mm. Okay, so I get, uh, I have this podcast start going, and I'm sitting off in the corner at the end. I think it was Keith that said, Miles should say something at the end of the podcast. That'd be funny. He gives advice. He doesn't know anything. Advice that'll go for like, well, on. Yeah, I've been praying my whole life for this. And I think probably they said that because I w- I had a history of just kind of being a silly goof around the office. I was letting people know that I was a silly goof. And then, during the pandemic, so I got this little segment at the end. And social media follower-wise, like, I'm starting to get a little bit of followers, right? People were like, oh, I watch podcasts. Oh, I see Miles' this segment at the end. I know he produces it. He doesn't talk really. But uh, I know his segment at the end. That's cool. And then at some point, we recorded the podcast, and someone was upset. And I was thinking about how somebody was talking on and TikTok about how the Beyonce tickets were like, the Beyonce tickets were like, 
$1,500 average, and I'm like, $3,500 for, like, VIP. And they were like, well, Jennifer has her tickets listed at $7,000, and everyone's like, Jennifer who? Because it can't be Lopez. She's delusional. We're just going to all be on camera where this release is good as a podcast. Who do you think's idea that was? Miles! Miles! He's a fucking leak! And I also knew this is kind of cool. One, I don't want a multi cam five different camera angles. But also, <laughs> two, I get to be on camera for the entire duration of the podcast. I'm not talking, at this point, I was not talking nearly as much as I was going to But slowly being on camera, being in the same frame as them, over the course of time, I was like, getting talking, 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 And then eventually, people were like, okay, this guy sounds funny. I'm pretty, I wasn't for everybody, by the way. It's also a good thing to remember. You don't have to be for everybody. But over the course of time, I'm not for everybody. I another guy that was just sort of in the I showed the sheets. That was recognizable to the people who watched the podcast. And that, so leap and i think that, by the way this is a good thing to remember for other careers too if you want to be a, the best fucking furniture maker work for a furniture maker that you respect mm. and slowly like learn their business and then try to start your own. Fucking, what's the word? Burger King. Or no, they say, uh, if you open what you eat, you the model of that food restaurant too, is like, uh, they open a fucking Wendy's, and then Burger King will be like, they open a Wendy's, let's open a Burger King. We need the same location. So they clearly have done the research to make that sense. Mm-hmm. I think that's a good thing to do for any type of business as well. If you leaped onto a company, and by the way, that also gives you the benefit of like, I wasn't trying to just be a full-time creator right out the gate. There was an Arby's in Philly. And I was like, I want to do a full-time job. I want to learn. I don't think I ever saw too many cars there. But then the pandemic hit. And I think Wendy's was like, oh, we're scoping it out. And it's red, same colors. Then they went through construction and now it's a Wendy's. But Wendy's is trash so, because they don't value their customers and they want to price gouge people. Now, so, fuck the bacon egg. Everything is unfair and bad. Mm-hmm. But you do not have to be unfair and bad. Everything is unfair and bad. What do I fucking mean? It's fucking hard to be a person right now. Everything is really bad, right? Geopolitics are really bad. The economy is in the fucking shitter. Uh, you have access to a device in your hand that is inherently so addictive, and you're getting constant news from every part of the world that is like also like pretty bad. And it's not that times now are so much worse than they used to be. It's just that you have access to information that is bad. Everything is really bad. It's very difficult. So you can't be hard on yourself. That it is di- difficult and unfair and bad. You do not have to treat yourself like, holy fuck, why am I not more successful? Why am I not more this or whatever? Everything is unfair and bad. And I'll say, my career, whatever, I think it's really weird. Sometimes people, this thing will happen where people get successful and they go, holy shit. And that's so crazy to me. Because it's mm-hmm. like, yeah, you obviously can make your own luck by getting more and more, uh, to me, you can get more and more lucky by getting more and more skilled. But it is luck. It is fucking inherently luck. It is lucky that I went to college with somebody that ended, ended up working at BuzzFeed at the time that I was working at a headphone store. That is total fucking luck. That I had. That was my end. That was why I got a job at BuzzFeed. Is that my friend Izzy recommended me because I was working at a headphone store making sketches in the arcade. Mm. Luck. Total fucking luck. It was total luck that by at the time I got laid off, Spy Guys was hiring, and I had freelanced on one job with uh, Fred Nolmer and. Uh, they recognized my name <laughs> and reached out to me to get a PA for it. That was holy fucking luck. It's all luck, baby. It's all luck. And it's important to remember that even when you are successful. 
And I think that uh, sometimes this will happen where big creators will be like, well, yeah, well, like it's it's funny when content went with the VidCon. Sometimes you'll see this. Mm-hmm. You'll see someone that's like, <laughs> like they're famous for doing something really inconsequential, <laughs> like a, like mukbang, right? And they have gotten famous from eating food on camera and people enjoying it. Mm-hmm. And they'll be like, yeah, I'm the fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm fucking awesome, and no one can fucking touch me. I drive the safest car ever. Mm. And it's like, what are you talking about? Like, I could never do a mukbang. You. You I cannot that much in one you sitting. Fucking, like, save people who are learning building. You make content of learning building. And that's Not cool. all at once. We just can't be too gracious. You can't treat like what you do as being so important. What are you doing? Like, yeah. Your ability to do whatever is so much shit. I have moments where I'm so stupid by the way you go, and I'm like, proud. It's okay to be proud. You just don't want to be, I don't know. Oh, I get down. So, like, you are successful almost exclusively because you're awesome. It's just crazy. People do that. Okay. Next. Oh, you don't have to be unfair at that. Don't on. If you have an opportunity to do literally anything, be as nice as possible to people and treat them with respect Thank you. and like have good role play. That's the only way that anyone can do So if I have like an opportunity to do something, and I, I'm very lucky in that like I make a regular podcast and I make one for Patreon, I try to like bring my friends on the show. One, it just has to fucking grab my brain so I get to hang out with my friends and I get to like talk a little bit of the time being on the show. Like that's a blast, right? So try and fun with your ability to be kind and grow something that is sustaining. Don't fucking, you know, think that it's all you. Think that you can't do it that way. Mm. Next one. Gratitude is everything. Why is Tucci's head just spread Gratitude wide? Is fucking everything to me. Gratitude is everything to me. So, will the flights be available after the presentation? Absolutely. Oh, I hope. Um, don't worry, Mom, let you go get this lady too whenever her books are released. No, exactly. Like, I'm not fucking, I mean, obviously, for, I'm obviously a perfect person. <laughs> but, like, I have moments where I'm just like, yeah, okay, I'm full of my ego and whatever the hell. Like, everybody does. But I think it's just ultimately you have to remember that, um, like, on a macro sense, everyone's just fucking lucky to be where they are. But also, gratitude is everything. So, <laughs> this all goes hand in hand. This is Stanley Tucci, the number one fucking dude right there. Uh, love him mm-hmm. uh, you have to be grateful for the things that you do have in your life that you are grateful for if you're trying to start a business. Also, the gratitude applies to your own successes. I am the uh, king of getting to a certain point. <laughs> yeah, the big is start fine. What do you mean? I think it's perfect. Uh, it's, I'm the king of like getting to a goalpost and then being like, okay, next goalpost, time. And you have to take time to be uh, grateful for the goalpost. I think about that all the time. Whenever I'm having a problem, I'm like, damn, I think he's, uh, you could be, uh, you could be like, you're so much more successful than me and forever. And all the time I have to stop and just be like, holy fuck. Zach just texted me. <laughs> you're going to get in the face while thinking about this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You're going to get in the face. It's crazy. At least I was like, okay. So <laughs> basically the point is, all right. You just want to like, make sure you're feeling good for the little wins. Because it's crazy, if you're trying to work in content creation at all, silly industry, only exists on the internet. Totally silly, totally ridiculous. I've had jobs I sucked for. I was a receptionist at Paperless Post, and it mm-hmm. sucked. They did not care for me. I did not mm-hmm. work out what was open and about it. Most of the time I was writing a musical about dead men. Maybe that's why I didn't care for me. But the point is, like, you have to be grateful for the small stuff. Because if you have a video, and it's the first video to hit a thousand views, you, your next step can't be like, holy shit, like, I'm nobody because this new video has 10,000 views. You have everyone to who's been watching my YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channel, thank and, you. Uh, the idea that that's just a lot of people is fucking incredible. You gotta be grateful for the little stuff, because that's kind of all you have, ultimately. <laughs> it's already cool. <laughs> okay, next slide. Own your shit and don't trust suits. This is Meghan Markle from the show Suits. Mm-hmm. This is Meghan the Stallion Markle from the show Suits. Meghan the Stallion so, Markle. 
I want your kid number thing, the first part of it. Um, uh, and, and so, given the opening of Dead Bunny the Musical, okay, the opening of Dead Bunny the Musical is, um, Hey, Mr. Bundy, won't you walk me home alone? I can't find my car keys or my money. You want my case? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. I do want to do a stage reading of the Dead Bunny the Musical at some point. Maybe on, maybe it's a screen, maybe it's a YouTube video. Uh, ultimately, what we find is Dead Bunny. The, the final song is called The World Kind of Needs a Villain. And it's about how, like, Dead Bunny's a villain, and obviously that makes some people just feel good. He has somebody to hate. Anyway. Uh, ownership is like, and, and don't drug suit, is uh, if you're in content creation, there's a lot of people at various, like, like different industries. I think it kind of exists in any industry. You'll get, like, a rogue email from someone who's like, hey, what's up, bud? Like, I'm actually from this cool company, and, like, we can't work to, wait to work for you, and we're going to do this for you, and, like, you're just going to give us a little bit of that cut and that that. And like, look, sometimes you do, do need agents and agencies, et cetera, managers, et cetera. But I think that you kind of have to, because sometimes that stuff is so helpful and allows you to achieve the next level of things. But for every awesome manager, agent, lawyer, uh, salesperson, there are seven that are like some hungry money kind of quantity. And you just have to be careful that when people try to sell you, you do not believe them. That has happened to me a bunch. Of someone's just like, yeah, dude, we're gonna. I had someone who shall remain nameless. Do I want to say the story? Mm -hmm. Think about it. Yes. I don't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what do you mean, no? You brought it up. Uh, but yeah, you want to own your own shit. Sometimes that means like also like owning your own IP, like. You do want to collaborate with people you love because, and like you admire because like that can be so beneficial. You want to make sure that, uh, like for my podcast, for example, I launched it independently and then signed with a podcast network. And I love my podcast network. Those guys are fucking sick. It's an amazing thing. Um, but I found that at the beginning, I was like, I think it's important to me that I own this. The Duplass brothers do this a little bit with uh, movies and television, where they're literally like, they will do a thing where um, like they'll take less money to own the 